There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about oxidation and reduction. And in this video, we're going to cover oxidation and reduction in more detail. But actually, we're going to cover it in terms of the galvanic cell and how oxidation and reduction occurs in the galvanic cell. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, describe and explain galvanic cells in terms of oxidation reduction reactions. So first of all, the verbs describe and explain. So we need to be able to explain why oxidation and reduction happens in the galvanic cell. So obviously we need to know what the galvanic cell is because we haven't talked about that yet. And we also need to be able to um, explain again what oxidation reduction, what that means as well. So I'll explain that those two terms again. First, before we start, we want to make sure we cover this example again, which we've brought up in the last couple of videos. Um, and we want to make sure we cover the word reduction and oxidation again and relate those two terms to what happens here. So we've got reduction. Reduction was two things. It's basically, they say the same thing. It's either the gain of electrons or the reduction oxidation number. So anything that has been reduced has gained electrons or it's had its oxidation number reduced. I'll explain that more in a second. Oxidation means the loss of electrons or the increase in the oxidation number. So anything that has been oxidized has either lost electrons or has oxidation number increased. And I'll show you again that both of those two things are the same thing. Um, so here we've got zinc, which is the zinc electrode. Zinc um, losing electrons, so it's lost electrons right here. And it turns into zinc 2 plus. So I'll we'll talk about um, oxidation first. So oxidation is loss of electrons. Zinc has lost electrons because zinc was here first, elemental stage first, and now it's lost its two electrons. So obviously it's been oxidized. So zinc has been oxidized. But the other way we can um, talk about oxidation is the increase in the oxidation number. And if you remember from last time, we had oxidation number, we have a couple of rules. First of all, if it's in this elemental stage, which in this case zinc is, zinc is an element, it's not, a, it's not an ion, it will have the oxidation number of zero. And for an iron, the oxidation number is whatever the charge on it is. In this case, the oxidation number is 2 plus, because the charge on this iron is 2 plus. So the oxidation is the increase in the oxidation number. So we've gone from 2, from 0 here, to 2 plus. So its oxidation number has increased. So no matter how we look at it, in terms of loss of electrons or increase in the oxidation number, they both tell us the zinc, in this case, has been oxidized. And once zinc has been oxidized, copper will take those two electrons. So here we've got those two electrons again, right here. And copper will take these two electrons and go from a copper ion to the copper elemental copper. Right? So in this case, it's a gain in electrons, so it's gained electrons. And if you look at the oxidation number. Remember, we said that if it's in its elemental stage, it will be oxidation number is always zero, and whatever it charge is. So in this case, two plus. It's also its oxidation number. So the ion has a two plus, and the element has zero. And in this case, the oxidation number has gone from two plus to zero, so it has been reduced. If you look at the definition of of reduction, it's either the gain of electrons. In this case, it's gain electrons. So it's been reduced, or it's reduction in the oxidation number. We've gone from two plus to zero, so it had it's actually also been reduced. If you look at it both those two ways, they both tell us the same thing. The copper has been reduced. Now we need to actually relate this to the galvanic cell. And I'm going to co cover the galvanic cell in much more detail as well in the next couple of videos. I'm going to show you an animation in a second as well to try to highlight what the galvanic cell is all about. But you can see lots of different things here, and I'm going to label them each. And um, we've got our wire on top here. So this is our wire. You're going to have electrons flowing through this wire in a second. This is our wire. We have a salt bridge. This here is our salt bridge. So this here, right there, a salt bridge. And in the salt bridge, we have salt. In this case, there can be different types of salt. It doesn't have to be the same salt every time. Salt is just two different ions which are attached. So we've got sodium 
on one hand and chlorine on the other hand. We call that sodium chloride. I'm just, I chose the most famous of the of the salts just to make it simple. But this um, these one pluses, one minuses, you can see here the green one minuses. These are meant to be your chlorine and the one pluses, the red one pluses, are meant to be your sodium. I'm going to label them all first, and I'm going to go cover. I'm going to go over the animation before we start it. And um, we've got our zinc strip. In this case, we don't call it zinc strip. We actually call it our zinc electrode. When it comes to covalent cells, that's how we define it as a zinc electrode. And we have, on the other hand, we have our copper electrode. So again, the example I mentioned in the beginning was all about copper and zinc. So this is actually what happens in, in this example. So our copper electrode. And then we have this solution here. And this solution is really important. It's called our electrolyte solution. We have zinc, zinc sulfate on the one side. So on the left-hand side, we've got zinc sulfate. You can see that this blue, the blue ones are two minus. We've got uh, SO4, which is sulfate, and it has a two minus charge. Then we have zinc in there as well, and the zinc, which are, is in the solution, is two plus. So that's zinc two plus. And we also have these ones, which are on the actual electrode. These are our elemental zinc. Oh, sorry, this zinc two plus should have been down there. This is zinc two plus. And this elemental one is just zinc. On the other side, we've got copper sulfate. So we've got copper in the solution, copper sulfate. Again, sulfate is SO4, which is that minus, two minus parts, SO4, two minus. And copper is, there's two different types of copper, copper ion. <coughs> Sorry, copper ions, which is that two plus. That's two plus, copper two plus. And our copper element on the electrode, which is copper. Once I'll play the animation, what you'll actually see is you'll see electrons will move from here because these will have been oxidized. We'll have electrons, two electrons, leave the zinc element and go through this wire to the other side. And once they leave, because they've been oxidized, we have it going from neutral, so from zinc to zinc 2 plus. So you're going to see this become 2 plus. And once it does, it will drop into the actual pond here, not the pond, but the solution. And you can see here we've got one, two, three, three zincs at the moment, and they're all 2 plus. And we have one, two, three sulfates as well, and they're all two minus. So at the moment, it's all balanced. The charges are balanced. We've got six pluses in total and six minuses. But the problem is, once we have another two plus here because of those electrons leaving, this will drop in and we'll have four zinc two pluses and three zinc uh, and three sulfate two minuses. So we have more pluses than minuses, but we need to have an equal charge. So what will happen is you'll see these here, these uh, minuses, which are the chlorine, they will actually move from the salt bridge into solution here, into here, to balance out that charge again. Right, so that's what will happen once the animation starts. The reason why they move is to balance a charge. So what the electrons, after the, once the electrons have left, they'll go through this wire here, and then they're going through copper, and they'll actually go down, they'll attract this two plus here, which at the moment is missing two electrons. It wants to get two electrons. It will grab those two electrons, and actually move on to the zinc, uh, the copper electrode right here. But the problem is that because this is gone, this is now here, and it's a normal copper. We only have two of these left, one and two. So we have four plus in total, but we have th three of these two minuses. So we've got six minus and two and four plus, which means we have an unequal charge. So what will happen is these electrodes and um, these pluses from here, the sodium ones, will move into this side to balance out the charge again. So it'll be two of them moving in to have a total of plus six and minus six again. So the reason why we have that salt bridge is just to equal out the charges because they always have to be equal. Right. So I'll play the animation in a second and you'll see all this happen. And um, I'll make sure to make it nice and slow so, so you can see and appreciate what will happen. All right, so first you can see here we have two electrons leaving from this electron here, from this zinc here. 
and they will leave and we'll follow that in a second but once the actual electrons have left you can see it is turning from normal to neutral to 2 plus and we'll drop into the actual solution now we have more pluses than minuses and to equal that out again we have your chlorine moving in so two of the chlorines will move in and now we have A plus and A minus on all sides so everything is good um, and that happened on the zinc electrons, so zinc got oxidized. Now we move to follow the actual direction of the electron. So you can see they're moving through the wire. And now they have moved to copper electrode. They're going to go down and now they've attracted this copper ion here. And what we'll do is we'll actually grab those two electrons and become from 2 plus, move into copper, normal copper, elemental copper, and deposit on this one here. The problem is now we've got two here. So four plus in total and, and the, the too many minuses. So you're going to have chlorine moving in. So the, the um, sorry, sodium, these red ones will move in to equal out that charge again. Now we were all equal again. So I'll show you that in full, full speed again. We have our electrons leaving. It drops in. Not everyone drops in. And then we have our minuses come in to equal out the charge. Now it's equal. You have electrons that have moved to the other side and they have attracted the electrode from the copper. So the copper 2 plus will move to the electrode. It will lose its, its 2 plus and become elemental copper. And to equal out that charge again, you can have your sodium, your red ones, move in because we've had our copper leave and now everything's equal again. Right? So that's the whole idea of a galvanic cell. Um, and when it comes to this wire, what we'll all often have, which I'll explain in more detail in next videos, is we have a voltmeter. So a voltmeter is something that measures electricity. So we've got electrons flowing through here. We've got electrons flowing through this actual wire, and we can measure that flow. And we use a voltmeter to measure that flow. Now when it comes to the actual dot point, it says describe and explain galvanic cells in terms of oxidation reduction reactions. So because we've lost electrons here, and the number was gone from zero, so these were zero beforehand, right? so because they're elemental, they're zero. So they're zero beforehand, and then they became two plus. Right? And once they became two plus, they left. So overall, this part was oxidized, because remember the definition of oxidized was if uh, gain of electro uh, oxidation, loss of electrons, and the two electrons left the other side, or an increase in the oxidation number, and its oxidation number increased from 0 to 2 plus. So this side was oxidized, and the other side we had, uh, again, copper was initially was 0. Copper was 0, but then once um, the electrons came, they grabbed this one here, and made it into one of these ones. So it went from 2 plus into a 0. So it has gained electrons. So that was the definition of reduction. It gained electrons. And also, its oxidation number was reduced. It was reduced from 2 plus to 0. So reduction occurred on this part, this side. Reduction. And we have names for these different types of electrodes. We have the anode. The anode was this electrode, and the cathode was this electrode. And I'm going to define these two in the next videos. But the anode was the electrode that we have where oxidation occurs, and the cathode was the electrode where reduction occurs. Right? So, uh, zinc electrodes, we had our zinc losing electrons, which means we had our oxidation occur. And because oxidation occurred, it's called the anode. And in this case, our copper gained those two electrons and became from a copper ion into a copper elemental part, which means the cathode was where we gained electrons, and that's where reduction occurred. Okay. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.